Otto Hightower and Tywin Lannister are two different people from two different shows. However, these two do seem very much alike. Even though they are separated by over a hundred years, they have many things in common, and one of those things is the skill of always getting what they want. Otto and Tywin also both served as Hand of the King. Despite being separated by more than a century of history, the two lords are uncanny, both in the source material of George R. R. Martin and in their on-screen depictions provided by HBO. Both served as the king's hand at the height of their power and preferred cruelty to secure their status. The two fought wars that threatened to tear Westeros apart, and both eventually realized the cost of ambition was their death. Given the considerable time gap between the two men, it is perhaps not difficult to understand that Lord Tywin had taken more than a few pages from Sir Otto, though perhaps he intended to do something very different. There was no denying that both lords had a passionate love for their families as long as they continued to improve their position of their respective homes. The Hightower House is one of the oldest and most important in the Seven Kingdoms. It is located within the Old City, as is the Basilica of the Star of the Seven Faith. The city's central commercial status made the high towers extremely wealthy, like the giant mines at Casterly Rock and the trading port of Lannisport. Wealth goes hand in hand with power, and both houses, Lannister and Hightower, are closely guarded by their chiefs. Otto links his daughter Alicent to Viserys Targaryen and sees Aegon Targaryen sitting on the Iron Throne despite his desire to meet him. By Viserys, his daughter Rhaenyra becomes queen. Sure, Tywin and Otto considered themselves excellent role models, but they weren't afraid of getting their hands dirty. Before King Viserys died, Otto began plotting and manipulating his daughter to put Prince Aegon on the throne above Princess Rhaenyra. Long before Viserys' death, he watched Rhaenyra's deeds, including a night of debauchery when she and Daemon Prince Targaryen snuck into a somewhat intimate brothel for fleas. Sir Otto jumped at this and immediately informed King Viserys, saying that Daemon had demeaned his daughter, perhaps hoping that this scandal would cause Viserys to designate Aegon as the heir. Even after being stripped of his Hand of the King status, it was clear that the order of succession was the most important thing on his mind when Otto returned to that position. He may say that sitting Aegon is good for the kingdom, but he knows who his nephew is. Even so, Aegon could still serve as a malleable ruler due to his unwillingness to be king, making Otto the most influential man in Westeros, if not in name. When Prince Aegon disappeared before his coronation, a rift arose between Otto and Alicent. Both send their agents to King's Landing to find the lustful prince, but they have very different plans for what to do after catching him. Alicent, hoping to strike a friendly deal with Rhaenyra and avoid bloodshed, hopes to send a message begging for peace before war strikes to contest the succession. Otto has no such desire and instead aims to get Aegon back and then kill Rhaenyra, her husband Daemon, and their children to secure his grandson's claim. Maybe he failed in the end, and the war still broke out, but moments like these show Otto's willingness to kill in stealthy ways to keep his family safe. For now though, we've only seen the manipulative and scheming side of Otto Hightower. But who knows, the show is still in its early stages, meaning that in the future we may see Otto's other side, the ruthless side, where he will become even more like Tywin, especially when the need arises. And we all know that Otto Hightower and Tywin Lannister are two people who will do anything to get what they want. What do you think about these two characters, and what are your predictions about them in the future episodes?